So he, here's a question I think we all kind of thinking about. So we're going to invest this money into a REIT, right? Uh, we, you know, we agreed to do that. So here's the question, man. Can you pull money out of a REIT? Yes or no? I guess I gave the answer, though, but I shouldn't have did that. So <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you get money out of a REIT? You can, um, depending on what you want to risk when it comes to paying taxes. Okay. And then also, uh, depending on, again, what kind of REIT it's actually going into. Um, because you can put money into an actual REIT, but then they have stipulations on how long you have to hold your money in that REIT for the investments that they're going to make. Gotcha. Gotcha. Precisely. So if you decide a, a date of maturity or like a, a it, is it normally a time frame that it has to stay in there? Sometimes it is because they've set a point to where you might be investing into this REIT and a part of your contribution is going to be into this one particular property. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to wait for that property to do whatever it is that they've got on their schedule for that property so that they can either sell or refinance that property. Sure. Okay. So you, so based on what we talked about a little earlier, man, as far as like the average return, man, the REIT, it, it has been proven over time, man, that it's a great, Thing to invest it from 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 the limited information that I know um, or looked up or did research on or whatever the case it would seem like it was a um, it outperformed a lot of other stuff man out there. Have you what do you guys when you guys looked it up man what do you guys see? Did you guys I mean, kind of promote that part, same deal? Yeah, for the for the most part it is it, especially the ones that you're looking at where they're doing mostly in all commercial real estate. There's more businesses that are opening, right? So they've got to have the commercial property to be able to operate and do that. Um, public storage was a big one for a, a, a while, huge. right? It's still commercial. And a lot of those REITs were getting into the public storage and turning over a lot of money and holding uh, those properties. Yeah. I, I have a small, well, I guess you could say it's like a pamphlet, right? And not an e-book, but it's a pamphlet of commercial stores. I how to invest in it. Yeah. Um that I that I did a couple years ago. So you need to pull that stuff up, man. <laughs> you know, but yeah, man, definitely, man. Um storages. Think about it, man. People if they, they buy all this stuff from Amazon, you gotta put some put it somewhere, right? So they put it in these storages or whatever the case. Or you move to a big house because of whatever situation and move it to an apartment, and most people want to get rid of their stuff or their toys and put it in storages. And it can be sitting there for years. And we already told me it's not to go up again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're about to see an uptick in foreclosures, so yeah. storage is going to go up again. Yeah, you know, I I have a um, one of my um, two people I know. They have a lot of land out here in Texas. You know, everybody has ranches, and they have. I a don't. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> well, I, mean, I I don't have a ranch. I <laughs> <laughs> but um, I only got land because I'm hanging around with all these people that have, you know, 500 acres, a thousand acres, you know, and I'm just going, how? And they're like, well, it was passed down in my family. And I'm, they're like, you know, you didn't get any. And I'm like, I was kind of on that other side where. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't have those down there, you know, back yeah. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> um, but what I, what it did was it taught me how much um opportunity so they took part of their land a few acres and they built storages on it and they are making hand over fist because it's low maintenance all they have to do is just build it and then have the people go and put their stuff in there and i was like that is such a clever idea that um is so i can see how it can definitely have a return so I also like people it. we've done people that with a RV parks like that too they're, they're doing their land with RV parks oh, yeah. and stuff like that, and making making oh, yeah. making some serious money doing that. Absolutely, I bought, I bought some land just for that. Where is oh, it? Man. Yeah, where is where it? Navasota. <laughs> where? Where? Navasota. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. you know they're building the Aggie Expressway, and so it's going to go straight through. Yeah. And if they do end up doing that high speed train, it's so I just I I had um some 401k that was sitting that was doing absolutely nothing and I couldn't move it because I wasn't in the industry where I could um, still have it as a functioning uh, 401k. Right. So I just pulled apart that one, which I didn't merge earlier and I just bought some land and it's already 
almost doubled in, in, in value already. Cool. Yeah. Did you borrow the money from your 401k? I just pulled it. Why? Because it was sitting. You should have borrowed it. Hmm. Well, I have you a have better. To... I have a better idea. If you huh. if you if you rolled it into a self directed IRA with the proper custodian, yeah. wow. and then you can use that money to invest in that, uh, and then all the returns go right back into that self directed IRA. Right. And so and so, and that is not a taxable event. Um, so, so probably if you pulled it out like you did, it's, it became a taxable event. Yeah. It is now cash money now that you can yeah. use however you want to. But, you know, anytime you leave an employer and you have that 401k that's sitting there, roll it into a self-directed IRA. I still have. It, yeah. So, so that would be a smarter move. And there's a great, there's a great I, a self-directed IRA company uh, that's in Texas. Quest. So, uh, Quest. Yeah. Quest Trust. So, so I, I know I know the boys there that run that, and and they will set you up so it all time. becomes tax stuff, for, uh, you know, tax free or tax deferred, depending on if it rolls as a traditional or as a Roth. Yeah, tell, 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 they got tell, right here, baby. Tell, tell, <laughs> them, tell them, Jay, tell them Jay sent you. Yeah, <laughs> Jay and Cody sent you. You get a discount. Yeah, they got an office in Houston for sure. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Houston, so, Dallas, so, and Austin. So, so 401k is is what is is post uh, post well pre tax right? The Roth IRA is post tax. Correct. So would they let you roll that into a self directed IRA? Yes, because I, I've got two self directed IRAs. One is a traditional. One is a Roth. Mm. Without well, so, you paying any penalties at all? No, huh? No, that you wow. don't have to pay any because it's especially if you have the IRA companies do that transfer. So if it doesn't pass through your hands, right, it then just, there's there's no question that you didn't touch it. So if you were to open up an IRA with one of these self-directed IRA companies, they will work to, with whoever is the holder of the 401k, and then it's just a direct transfer, and that does not become a taxable event for you. You did you did change my life, man. Right, <laughs> I'm gonna shed a tear right here, bro. Well, that's why you hired me, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you were my life. <laughs> Deborah, Deborah, I want to hear. What you said. Yeah, yeah. This, What's that? This is very good because, like that, when I left out of the industry um, and I moved into when I came back to Texas, um, I had um, I had a four hundred one k here before, and then I had at the time I was in my twenties and I think part of my thirties, and I was putting um, the max into my four hundred one k because I. Sure still mm -hmm. bartending. So I, my salary, I just saved all of it. And I paid all my bills with my, my flex money. And when I got to, I had this money in this account, I moved to Arizona. They started me a new one for some odd reason. And then when I came back to Houston as a professor, they put me in uh, whatever the Texas, it's a TRS, Texas retirement system. Sure. So now money's frozen yeah. and it's just sitting. And I'm like, what the heck? So I pulled one of them out, bought some land, and I still have a whole nother chunk that's literally just dormant. I can't touch it. Yeah, call Quest. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Actually, I'm going to let me go to my email. <laughs> wow. I got it. Oh, okay. So this, this is huge, man. This is, this is yeah. real estate of Holics, man. <laughs> Getting this good information. So we all learned it here. All right. So.